Oh, greetings to you guys once again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Greet you in that name that is above every other name. And uh, yeah, we've got um, Brother Patrick Cabongo in the house. Pat, you there, man? Yeah, I'm here. How's everybody All right. today? All right, there we go. Yeah, we're 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 uh, we're getting this down. We're getting the Spreaker Studio down and and figuring out how to use all of these things. And uh, yeah, so all you guys out there that are listening in, Pat and I, we were just having a call and we said, you know what? Let's just let's just uh, take this and and let's play around and let's uh, go straight to <laughs> go straight to audio. So, um, Pat, how you doing, brother? You know what? It's time. It's been time of uh, for sure trial and and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, not questioning, but just um, actually questioning. It's not even right. It's mostly like you know wanting to uh, you know how do we get this thing being better? How 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 does that how does that how Did you hear that sound? Was it that? Yeah. Let's see. What what is that sound? Um, yeah. yeah keep, so keep keep. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 really that like how to really serve the God that we know every single day the way we're supposed to do it like the way I was supposed to do it I guess the way. Yeah, and you know that that is one of the challenges that you know we all seem to face while we're here in this life and in this world is because we're tested in that, right? You know, we're tested in in the reality of the decisions that we make. We're tested in um, the things that come up and the situations that come up and the situations that arise, and um, and how do we respond? You know, because the thing is too is like it's easy. To um, when everything's going well, to um, to to you know kind of be down with God's program, <laughs> right? I mean, oh, when uh, oh. when when the children of Israel were going, I was reading this the other day. Um, you know, when the children of Israel were uh, got liberated and went through across from you know through the Dead Sea and or not the Dead Sea, the Red Sea. You know, God separated the waters and they walked across and. And, you know, in that situation on the other side, everybody's celebrating and, you know, the, all the women are coming out with tambourines and dancing around and praising God. But, you know, then the trials come not too many verses later and everybody's mad and everybody's yeah, upset, yeah. you know, and it's just like, and it's, I mean, there's definitely the human side of our experience, which is, which is, uh, can be rough sometimes because, you know, we have these things that, that, that are difficult, you know, and, and then the, 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 the question that comes through the mind of the mortal being, which is, okay, God is all powerful, all knowing, all present, right? <laughs> so we've all learned yeah, that yeah. in that Bible class of God's omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, you know, all the omnis. And, and it's like, okay, so, so he's everywhere. He knows and he can do something. So since God can do something, then the question starts coming into our mind. Um, okay, then, 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 then we start having the why. You know, the why comes up. Of, okay, why the suffering? Why the difficulty? Why the struggle? Why did this thing get through? You know, because um, I think you know, among even people that are all, that are close to us, recently a lot of us, you know, have been you know varying degrees, but just been it's been rough times recently. And, yeah, you know, yeah, and the question is just the question is like okay, okay the 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 infamous then then why you know and um, and I think this is part of being real you know in our walk in our relationship with God because I don't I don't think Pat did anywhere in our church experience did anybody tackle that sufficiently in any of the conversations that we had with people there I, I honestly don't think so like I I, I think. Like I mean, maybe a couple times they alert to it, but it's I think I think for us more, for me, I want to speak for me because I would speak for me. I think church, I want it to be 
real. I want it to be specific. I want it to be, you know, what God, like, you know, um, I don't want, I don't want, uh, I don't want. Yeah, but, that, um, that's, that's exactly what I'm look, I think we're looking for. We, we want, like, we want to make sure that the church address the, those battles. That, you know, I think that was the first. I think that was the first. Um, Pat, I think, I think, Pat, I think your Skype is cutting in and out, man. If, uh, I'm not sure on the settings on that side, but it's coming through a little bit splotchy. And this is, again, we're having the strange technical difficulties as soon as we're <laughs> starting to try to do this. Um, but yeah, no, from what, from what I heard from you said there was like, you know, that's something that we, <clears throat> we wanted for sure, you know, in our, in our church experience, but we didn't get because so often when it came down to the actual questions that of life that <clears throat> you know those weren't answered those weren't answered in the in the the i mean they were glossed over or we were given a a pat answer or we were given a you know a, a just a, a glossing over the surface thing and then we were told not to question anything right and so yeah. because it's like you know you you and but then that doesn't satisfy then the this this um it doesn't satisfy the issue at hand it doesn't satisfy with the life that we deal with while we're here on the earth so yeah. you know the question of okay why do difficult situations arise in the life of the believer why do bad things happen to good people um, why do uh, you know those kind of things, which nobody wants to? Because in in the in most people's mindsets, um, you know the way that it should work is good things should happen to good people, bad things should happen to bad people, and that's just the way that life should be. If if this was a logical or um, a world that made sense, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, but but then the reality is that it's not like that. I mean, the reality of living in an inverted world is that a lot of the most wicked, depraved, crazy people have been the ones that have been making the decisions um, to to for that have been what has run the world and the world system. And a lot of the good people and people with solutions and people with innovations and ideas have just suffered on the fringes. Uh, if not been wiped out um, for doing nothing more than just being who they are and trying to help. So, you know, how long does that situation go on for? How long does that continue on for? And how long do we, uh, I mean, does that, so I think that's a little bit more in line with the reality of, of why the whole thing does wrap up. <clears throat> that's part of the reason why, you know, we have the vision of the prophet Daniel and, um, you know, where the whole thing gets crushed and destroyed and there's no trace of it anymore. But, yeah. Uh, but, but and, 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 and I think also it's, it's from, like I said, I speak for myself, like, you know, uh, why, why are we getting deluded when it comes down to church? Like, you know, like, some, some churches are, are really, and they're small, you know, they're fighting, they're fighting the good fight. Like, they're, nothing, they're not fighting the good fight, but do that spiritual warfare compared to, you know, other places, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think we definitely know a few good ones out there, and they're small and they're few and far between. But yeah, it's a good question, man. Like, why why do the these other ones? And 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 I think there's some answers in the scriptures about it too, which is that you know there are infiltrators that go and they try to to work their way in, and they get the confidence, and they they become part of the system and the leadership, and then they take it over and they take it off the cliff. So that's happened time and again, and I think a lot of time when people, you know, they they walk with God and they they follow the call, 
but also then too there's a lot of other things that they don't know or they don't know a lot of other skills they don't have and you know none of us are spiritual all the time and so it's just like they've got weak spots and they and they miss some things and in the process of missing some things bad people come in and and uh work things over exactly and also you feel like you feel like it's you know let me change this setting actually uh yeah <clears throat> i mean one yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give you a second while you're getting that sorted there. But yeah, no, it's just, um, you know, because the thing is, too, is that in the middle of all of this, you know, we're we're living on this, this planet and we're, you know, we're here. We're here by God's direction and God's design. And we're here for this this window. And um, but, yeah, it's just like, OK, well, how how do we live in that window? And especially since there's not it's not just that. Um, you know, the answers are not there in so many of these places that, that it's deficient what people end up um, <clears throat> end up providing. But um, but it's it's also the fact, too, that it's just like it's actually misleading. Um, it's actually a deception that people are being given in these circles. And it, it can shipwreck your life because you can be waiting for something or expecting something that's not true. It's not accurate. It's a misrepresentation of what God said. It's a misrepresentation of what the truth is. You know, I mean, you know, how many, think back, Pat, to like, say, in college, right? How many books were there published on dating during that, during this, those church? Oh, a million. Years? A million, uh, and, a million and, books. And, and, a how million many, book. and how many people's lives were destroyed because of those books and that religi religi religiosity and this false teachings about relationships and life and all the rest of it that just got people looking for all these things that didn't exist. I mean, how many people do you can you think of that that were destroyed by that? I know several. I can think about a yeah, I can think about a million people, like a ton of people that I, yeah you know we encounter and you know yeah let's read this book about this and. Let's be part of, you know, let's, 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 let's live life like that. And, but it's, at the end of the day, you know, they find themselves. Wait, say that again, Pat. Do you say that at the end of the day, they find themselves what? Still, still being single. Yeah. You know, and they spend so much time, like, you know, enjoying the single life and, <laughs> <laughs> and you find yourself at, you know, single forever. And you're like, well, did I do the right thing? You know, and it's like, why? Yeah. And, and you know, the, the, the reality is, is that there's a way that, that certain things just are. And there's a way that certain things work. And <clears throat> there's a reality of what God has said. And there's a reality of what he did not say. You know, because because the, that's something too, where it's just kind of like, I think this has been one of the big deceptions that that has happened is that, and Jesus alluded to this while he was walking on the earth, man. He he, when he was walking around and he's talking to people, and he said, look, you know, this is what's been instructed in the scriptures, but you know, you guys have gone and you've taken the scriptures, and now you've got your own man-made traditions, and you observe the man-made traditions, but you disregard the commandments of God. And that's kind of, you know, what I think we've we've ended up with in most religious circles is the destruction of the truth and a form of godliness that denies the power thereof. And in the end, people have just missed it. And, you know, and I think I think that is part of the problem. Part of the issue that we face is that is that we have a misunderstanding and a miss we've we've. We have a misteaching and a misunderstanding about who God is and about how God relates to us and about how God relates to our time here on the earth. Um, and that's, I think that's a, that's a big one because people will fight tooth and nail to protect, protect a church tradition that has nothing to do with the truth of God. And exactly. You know, it, it has, exactly. It has, it has nothing to do with the truth of God. Like, and, and that's where, for me, I, 
I'm at. It's, it's, what is, what does God wants me to do exactly? And that's a question everybody should ask themselves. What does God want me to do? And how, what about me? How, if, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, um, you know, it, it's one of these things, man, where it's just like, <clears throat> I think without, without that revelation. Now, here's the other part of it, too. You kind of see this with when Paul was walking on the earth. He said, you know, that like, what, once he had that revelation of Christ Jesus on the Damascus Road, he went onto the backside of the desert for three years. And he, when later on, he said, look, the, the, what I got from God, I got it from direct revelation. God taught this to me. And then he went forward to, to, you know, to compare notes and to share and to teach and to do the ministry that God gave him to do. And I think that's an important piece because it's in line, too, with what Jesus said, is that he said, you need that no man teach you because um, the Holy Spirit will teach you when he comes upon you. So <clears throat> I think that that. That now the place that human beings and you know leadership in the body of Christ may have is to help to bring out or to help to quicken or to help to uh, um, sometimes just you know reinforce something that God is re showing you, but God is the one that's quickening it in your own heart and spirit. And and, and that's real. Like it's it's God needs to quicken. Whatever he needs to within your spirit, like, yeah. and that's where we should all be, and that's where we. I mean, I strive to be is to hear from him, like, like literally hear his voice, like take this step, take that step. No, don't go there. Say this word, say that word. Right. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I wonder, like. You know, when Jesus went in and he fasted for 40 days, do I need to fast for 40, literally fast for 40 days? They can literally hear from him. Yeah. You know? Do we all need to do that? Do we all need to be at a place where he speaks to us? You know? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I mean, and the, that's a good question, man. It's, and I think that comes down to the individual as well, because God calls. I, I've seen for myself in my own life when the times have been when God has kind of called me into that. It's very different than the times where I've tried to do something on my own. But when he calls us into a time of prayer, calls us into a time of fasting, he's kind of right there with us in it, you know. Whereas when when we're when it's us kind of trying to do it as a religious practice, it's hard, it's laborious, and, um, you know, and and it's just, it just doesn't quite work, you know? I mean, I remember when, like, there would be, I don't know, like, times where people would try to put it on you to do certain things like that, and I remember that it just, just didn't work. I mean, like, you'd do it, but it was just, but it was just hard, you know? It's just, there was no... No, God's yoke is easy and his burden is light. It's like, and yeah, I mean, it's not an easy thing to, to, to do fasting, but you can feel when it's something led by the spirit and that he's right there with it. And when you, when you cut away from, you know, food or a drink or something that's going to be, or you just cut certain, th certain things out so that you can focus on the things of God in the process of doing that, um, he's right there with you in that. And you could feel kind of an upswelling of the spirit in that time where you may be backing off some of the natural things. But yeah, we, I mean, God, Jesus did say when you fast, not if you fast. So <clears throat> something that we do, we do have as part of our, our um, <clears throat> spiritual discipline and part of our spiritual weaponry. But, you know, even with something like that, I mean, we never talked about that. I mean, I guess we talked about it some in some of the churches we were involved with, but it wasn't, I don't think we ever realized the significance of it or the power that was in it. You know what? Uh, I, uh, I I looked it up on YouTube and different places and how to fast, right? And 
I tell you, not many people talk about that. Like, there's people that talk about it, but it's not something that you would have in a, <clears throat> in a quote unquote, they would speak about it. Yeah. They would do that. Yeah. Like, you know, like, it's not something like fast will be okay as a church, we're going to fast for the next two days. It, most churches don't do that. They don't ask the faithful to do that. Yeah. But that should be a common practice, right? Like, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I hear you. Because you think about like the direction that God wants a church to go or and it shouldn't be just decided by I mean I'm not saying the pastor decides everything. <laughs> At the church, everybody comes together and starts talking about this. Yeah. Right. So. No, it's it's a powerful discipline, man. And uh, you know, I think part of it too is just is just us hearing from God directly. You know, we want that's what we want. I mean, in the end, that's what we want is we want to hear from God directly so that we know the way that we need to go and we know how to deal with the things that come up in this life because we need to you know whenever we face a struggle and a difficulty we need to hear from him we need to know what he says about it we need to know how to read it how to interpret it and you know i i just i think that i think we've come to a place where you know we can't we can't have a glossy surface answer. You know, we can't have something that just comes out of a book as just a pattern of here's how you deal with this. I mean, it's got to be from God. We got to hear from him because there's just too much. You know, there's too much on the line. There's too much at stake. There's, you know, our souls and the souls of other people are in the balance. And we want to make sure that we walk this thing out the right way. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's part of what we're facing. So we need the real deal. Exactly that we do need, we do need the real deal. We we we, we, that's, we need the real deal. Yeah. So, I think I think the struggle that we've all been facing though recently though is because too, you know, part of it is, I mean, if you want something that's real and you're willing to go with God, it's part of the journey is that, and Jesus even promised this. In John 16, at the end of the chapter, he said, in this world, you will have trouble. You know, take yeah. heart, for I've overcome the world. So it's like, you know, it, it's it, part of the struggle is that we face trouble, you know, and we've got to overcome that trouble. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not, <clears throat> it's not a, it's not a comfortable thing. It's not a comfortable reality, but it is the reality nonetheless. But exactly. then the thing is, then how do we overcome that? Because, you know, I think I think there's a few ways, a few things that I've seen. One is one way is to not be in it in the first place. <laughs> that comes a little bit by being led by the spirit, where I think God allows us to avoid certain things or he pulls us out of certain situations. You know, another one is um, God puts us into situations because it serves his purpose. That's that's that was a tough one for me <clears throat> was because, like, you know, sometimes he will deliberately put us into a place where we kick over the beehive and then he'll walk us out of it. But, you know, we just got put right in the middle of the lion's den because that happens. I mean, that's scriptural. You know, God puts Daniel right in the middle of the lion's den because he did the right thing. But in those situations, God is with us, and he protects us, and he leads us out of there. But it's a difficult situation. There's betrayal involved. There's there's struggle. There's, you know, you're alone. You, you've, you've not done anything wrong, and, and you're still being thrown to the lions. They just don't get to eat you. But if the world had their way, they would have, they would have had you eaten in a moment. Yep. Exactly. So, and... and- it just seemed like, I mean, we've seen it, me and you, we've back and forth, we're, it's like we're always in the battle. Always in the battle. We're, you know, there's always something thrown 
not just on us, but on, on the family, on, on what we do, on the things that we do, part of it. Yeah, yeah, and, and and we see that with other people, we you know we feel so like some of so the people we know in the, in the group is just like um, something that comes with me, something that comes with me, you know, I can't just listen to something. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think I think we do. We see that. You know, we see a lot of people that are under attack because they've done good work and they're they're seeking to follow God and they're seeking to be true and they're trying to to go forward with what He shows them. And but yeah, they're in battle as a result of it. You know, there's there is that scripture that does say too, you know, that if you remain in Him and your words, His words remain in you, you know, you bear much fruit. And that that thing about overcoming is part of it too, is just to remain in Christ. You know, it's that place, that spiritual position, where we trust Him no matter what the situation is. But I think too, it's just it's sometimes, man, it's, it's just rough because we don't want to. Uh, I mean, it would be nice to have, if at all possible, be at peace with before God and man. But it just seems like that's a rough one to do because a lot of people don't want to be at peace. Yeah. Exactly. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's... it's uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's, I guess, you know, one of the things too, is just for, for people that are listening today, you know, a couple of takeaways. One is just that, you know, to, to be embattled in this life and in this world is part and parcel of the journey here. You know, God told us that in, and he put it in his word for us. And, um, yeah, you know, yeah. and I think that's something that we should have been getting taught while we were in church but if nothing else we're going to tell people now just so that they know like you know you're going to in this world you're going to have trouble take heart god's overcome the world um know that your weapons of your warfare are not carnal but they're spiritual in christ jesus know that we battle not against flesh and blood but against powers principalities spiritual wickedness high places um you know did a bit of an audio recently on uh it's called the watchers you guys can go back and check that but we talked about you know where these guys came from and why they're still here and how they're still here and and also that you have that understanding of these demonic presences and these evil spirits and these um watcher angels and all of this stuff that's there you know another thing too is that this is an interesting one but if people do go and read the book of enoch anytime soon we start reading it one thing that's interesting is uh, when God talks about, you know, the culmination of the age, the the people that are taken are, you know, like, because when we were taught the, about the rapture and stuff in church, everybody talked about, like, the people of God being, you know, taken off of this world that's going into chaos and everything else, and they're being, like, raptured out, right? Well, in the book of Enoch, it talks more about, in the end times, the people that are taken out are the um are the 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 weeds not the wheat but the weeds are removed the evil ones are the ones that are removed not the children of god and it's interesting because if you look at just read the story of noah but it's the i mean all the the evil ones were the ones that were taken off the face of the earth noah was carried on you know noah and his sons and his his and their wives and all of them, they're the ones that remained on the earth. So, you know, if it's as in the days of Noah, if that's as it's going to be in our days and our time, doesn't that change the perspective a little bit when, you know, when you realize a little bit too more, like Jesus said, the meek shall inherit the earth, that it's going to be quite possibly, if this, if the book of Enoch is to be taken as a text for consideration 
which I, I definitely see that it, it is because it's quoted in the book of Jude, it's quoted in a lot of other places. That being the case, okay, well, how do we change our approach if we realize that it's the wicked and the evil and the children of the devil that are uprooted off of this earth and are bound up into bundles and thrown into the fire to be burned and then God's wheat is taken into his barn. You know, what if that's the switch? What if that's the change? Does that change the way that we behave? Does that change the way that we act? Does that change the way that we look at our time on the earth? Yeah. Yeah, I just, I, I, I asked that because, man, I tell you what, there's so many people that were always, when we were growing up, just always looking to get out of here. You know, they just were looking for the exit. And, and they missed the, the reason for being here. Well, and that's the thing, like, you know, there's a reason why we're here, and there's, we all got time, you know, that we're going to be on Earth, and it's what, it's what we do with it, like, yeah. either way, at some point, we're all going to check out, we all check out at different times, right, so, but while you're here, it's where you got to serve him, you serve him. Yeah, and, and you literally live for him, and exactly what he's calling you to do. Yeah, yeah, and then and then that's where too I think where we get the challenge too of our own expectations, because there's that other piece, right? Maybe this is part of the dying to self that we struggle with, because there's that other piece where it's like, okay, we live for him. But then along the way, we've been made with certain desires, certain thoughts, certain maybe some of it's plugged into us by, you know, our time where we've been, you know, around the world and everything else. Maybe some of this stuff is God given, you know, but whatever it is, putting those desires before God and letting him be the one to orchestrate and to lead and to guide the fulfillment of the things that might be in your heart. But. Yeah, it's just kind of like, okay, we want to follow God and we do that. But somewhere in our mind, that thought process has always been there that, yeah, if, if we follow God, then things should kind of work out, <laughs> right? Like good things should happen if we follow God. And, um, you know, like, yeah, and I, I mean, for sure <clears throat> in the long run, you know, in the eternal sense, that's absolutely true. But the journey that we have in this life, is it the case for that? Um, I mean, I think from what I've seen for myself is that I've had a fulfilled life. That for sure. Like there's, there's it's been an extremely full life. And I've not lacked for anything of, of need or of, uh, of anything of substance. God has always provided, so I've not... So he's provided the needs, and it's been a full and a fulfilled life. But it's not been what you would expect, you know, what I would have expected if I said, okay, this is the way that it's going to be or going to happen if you're following Jesus. Yeah. But, you know, it's still, so it's a challenge. You know, it's a challenge to to deal with our own expectations, man. I mean, you know, because we, we definitely have them. And, you know, and then it's just kind of like, okay, well, what do we do with those expectations? Do we, um, is it, yeah, I mean, it's, although sometimes too, man, when I've looked back as well, there has been a blessing in certain times where certain things didn't happen the way that I thought they would, or maybe there was some reason for something. I mean, I'll, I'll give you one example that, that you were familiar with. <clears throat> so when I was doing my master's degree, you remember I ended up spending an extra uh, semester just to write because the, they, liked, they liked what I was doing and everything, and everything worked out with the college, and they asked me to just spend a little time, extra time writing. And so it delayed my graduation by a semester, um, but you remember the timing of that in the end i graduated um on what was it, december 18th 
and then I was yes, traveling yes, to Sri yes, Lanka yes. December 26, 2004, when yes, the tsunami yes. happened. Exactly. And you were there. It, it you was you the right time. The it was yeah. exactly the right time. As you were actually flying over, as you were flying, literally, that's when the tsunami happened. Like, hours yeah. within your flight. Like, you know? And so on one level, like, you know, I, before, because, I mean, I, I could have finished my degree earlier, but there was just something about the timing of certain things around that window. And... <clears throat> And uh, I mean, and it's just like looking back on that now, today, you know, now it makes so much sense. Of course, God's hand and God's timing. But if I would have graduated earlier, I probably would have taken a job somewhere else and I wouldn't have been able to do anything. If it had been later, I would have missed it. I yeah. wouldn't have been free. I couldn't have gone. And a lot of stuff happened that impacted, you know, not just my life, but the lives of a ton of people as a result of just being in step with God's timing. So I think there's that element there too. Is just that when we flow with God, we we and we allow for Him to orchestrate our lives. That He also knows where He wants us, when He wants us there, what He wants to happen in particular things, and we've got to be open for that. And I think you know it's it's a struggle because the thing is, like Jesus said to His brothers, He said, "Look, any time's good for you guys, but I got to be about my Father's business," and. <clears throat> You know, that's the thing is like any time is OK for us because we think like people, you know, because that's what we're around most of the time. And the thinking like people is like is like there's, you know, it's just we, you know, every time should be OK. Everything should be now. You know, why? Why wait for anything? But you know, God's, got his, God's got his purpose. So. I think there's that element there, too, that we've got to be mindful of. It's just that if we turn our lives over to the Lordship of Christ, then um, then he's also in charge of the timing of our life and the timing of events. And if, if there are things that seem like they're delayed or if there's things that just seem like a struggle or there's things that just seem like, you know, that get put off or that don't happen, just even trusting him in, him in those as well is important because then we're open for the larger reality and the bigger picture. Because you gotta, we gotta both trust that that um, Romans eight twenty eight, you know, that God causes all things to work together for the good of the called according to His purpose. You know, and there is that 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 need to to experience that um, and that promise and that truth of God's. Yeah, and that's and that's and that's where I think we, for a lot of people, they miss the mark because are we always listening to him or are we listening to the outside voice? Yeah, you know, it's really that. Like, are we listening to him or are we listening to the outside voice? There's a lot of outside voice out there. Oh, absolutely, man. And you got to be able to defer what is God and what is an outside. It's a noise. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's really that. And that's where, for me, I come to... Yeah. <clears throat> and I mean, when we listen to uh, guy like that, for even Kunita, they they talk a lot about that, about what's his will. Also, the question is sometimes I ask myself that question: Why am I questioning the will of time? What he wants? I can't clear my sweat. Can we say that again, Pat? Uh, I said it should be clear exactly what he wants from us. Yeah. Right? Why are we asking ourselves so often, what does he want me to do? Yeah. Well, I think I think the reason, too, sometimes we ask that is because we start going down a particular track that we see and we feel that this is what God wants us to do. 
And then in the process of going down that track, we get hit smack dab in the face with something that contradicts the instruction we just got. <laughs> but I think sometimes too, that's, that's, that's also can be a mark that we're on the right journey, that we're on the right track. Um, but um, because, you know, the opposition is part of it. You know, the opposition is part of, of, <clears throat> of the journey. So, yeah, you know, um, so we we're, we're, uh, we just want to touch base with you guys out there a little bit and bring in on the conversation that Pat and I were having. Um, we're going to wrap up here in a little bit. But, um, Pat, any final thoughts, man? Any closing words of encouragement for these guys? Uh, closing words. Keep on keeping on, people. Just keep seeking him. Really seek him. And, you know, if you need to, you know, to be at a place where you need to hear him and, you need to exclude, you know, put yourself away from everybody. Do it to hear his voice. I think that's important. And that's myself speaking to myself, right? With everybody else out there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Hey, Amen. And I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you on that one, my brother, because I think it's just you got to keep on keeping on. You know, I saw that video from of ours from some time back where we were over in Vancouver and we asked the questions, live, you know, live in the moment. I mean, be here now, you know, focus on the things of God, focus on what God's put in front of you to do and to be, you know, you got to trust him. You got to trust him in your struggle. You got to trust him in your weakness. You got to trust him in um, whatever it is that's, that's in front of you because in the process of, uh, of, of whatever you face, you, you'll, you're going to see his hand. You're going to see him, glorified because um because you go through and you're his extension in the earth at such a time as this you are the ambassadors of christ at such a time as this so um yeah no it's all good you know you guys you got to just trust god and know that he's in control remain in the vine um let his words remain in you you're going to bear fruit it's all going to be good so with that um we love you guys out there god bless you Drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com. You can reach us there. Um, And, um, yeah. All right. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Take care.